Our planet is full of mysteries. No matter the advancement of human civilization, nor the massive strides that we have made in technology, exploration, or figuring out just what the hell this whole universe thing is all about, in the grand scheme of things, we know very little as to the true extent of our history. As so far as we look forward to the future, full of all of its uncertainties and possibilities, as is the same with the past. The ancient history of civilization is murky at best. And in the process of unearthing these mysteries, the scientific method has been stretched to its limits of what can possibly be known. Such is the case with Gobekli Tepe, the ruins of an ancient world that potentially could change everything. So let's take a look. Hello internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, life's biggest questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch, as today we curiously ask the question, what will we find at Gobekli Tepe? Now, to first figure out just exactly what's going on here, it's probably best that we give a little bit of exposition. And for the curious amongst you who are currently sat scratching your head at the thought of what Gobekli Tepe could, should, or would ever be, framing the narrative is going to be a pretty important first step. Essentially, to cut potentially the longest story ever told short, Gobekli Tepe is a temple. Or, well, in all likelihood, it is a temple. And although the ancient world is myriad with ruined sites of long lost civilizations and societies, temples included, this one appears to be from a time even older than any of those. Stonehenge, the pyramids of Giza, and the Nazca lines included. Even the Sphinx. Back in 1963, in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey, during a joint survey conducted by Istanbul University and the University of Chicago, an American archaeologist by the name of Peter Benedict discovered a series of strange stone tools collected from the surface of the site. Initially, the research team thought that the area was a Byzantine cemetery, and so the huge stone slabs that were laid out in T-shaped pillars were arranged in such a manner that it was difficult to discern from the site built on top of them. However, the tools that Benedict had found bizarrely pointed back to a period known as the Aceramic Neolithic, a period of history dating back to between 10,000 and 8,800 BCE. In other words, what it suggested was that it was far, far older than the Byzantine Empire. And after radiocarbon dating the huge stone slabs laid out before them, that only confirmed that some of them dated back as far as 9,130 BCE. This wasn't Byzantine at all, but Neolithic. Strangely enough though, the group widely dismissed the site. They brushed it off as some bizarre anomaly, and that was that. In short, although they didn't know it at the time, what they had discovered was potentially the oldest ancient ruin known to modern archaeology. Gobekli Tepe, or Potbelly Hill in Turkish, that would later reveal more than 200 concentric pillars roughly arranged in around 20 circles, each of them towering at a height of up to 20 feet and weighing over 10 tons. Each of these pillars are fitted with sockets hewn out of their bedrock, the purpose of which is unknown at best and can only ever be alluded to. Some of them are carved with elaborate sculptures of animals hunting down prey, bulls, foxes, lions, cranes, the purpose of which, again, can only ever be guessed at. And if these presentations sound oddly familiar, then that's because they are. This ancient site, with its stone pillars painstakingly arranged in concentric circles, is remarkably reminiscent of places such as Stonehenge and the Ring of Brodgar. But you see, what is staggering is that it predates the oldest of them by over 6,000 years. And not only that, in chronological terms, it completely reshapes the way we think about the ancient world. You see, the extreme efforts that would have been required to construct such a site does not corroborate the way that we see ancient humans. During that period, these ancient humans would have been hunter-gatherers, roaming the rich fertile lands in small nomadic groups, and certainly not settling down to build giant temples of stone circles. You see, what Gobekli Tepe suggests is that at the very end of the Pleistocene, before pottery or metallurgy was discovered, before the wheel was invented, before the so-called Neolithic Revolution began and marked the beginning of agriculture and animal husbandry, husbandry emerged, a group of humans built one of the most complex megalithic structures ever witnessed. Under the most conservative estimations, around 500 people would have been required to extract the stone from local quarries that make up the heavy pillars of Gobekli Tepe. Then they would have had to have been moved up to 500 meters to the site by manpower alone. Now keep in mind that these pillars weigh anywhere between 10 to 20 metric tons and there are over 200 of them. This is during a period of history where supposedly we as a species hadn't even invented the wheel. Gobekli Tepe is an astounding 10,000 to 12,000 years 
years old and it was made with remarkable construction. It is beyond ancient in the literal sense and if something sounds amiss then you'll certainly understand the ever elusive mystery that has since befallen archaeologists since its discovery. One of those archaeologists and perhaps the most recognised mind behind the mystery of Gobekli Tepe is a man named Klaus Schmidt, a member of the German Archaeological Institute who in 1994 took to attempting to decipher the mystery of Gobekli Tepe after the Istanbul and Chicago teams had long given up on their endeavour that had occurred throughout the 60s. And Schmidt had been doing pretty much exactly that up until his death in 2014. As Schmidt had dedicated most of his life's work to the site of Gobekli Tepe, his reimagining of the ancient enigma has lent itself to some pretty compelling theories. You see, after its construction roughly 12,000 years ago, these prehistoric people would have gazed upon Gobekli Tepe as herds of gazelle and other wild animals frolicked amongst gently flowing rivers, as migrating geese and ducks settled on the waters, fields would have rippled with wild barley and wild wheat. It would have been a paradise, and indeed we do know that Gobekli Tepe sits on the northern edge of the Fertile Crescent that spreads from the Persian Gulf up to present day Lebanon, Israel, Jordan and Egypt. That is a given. If one could have imagined such a beautiful and abundant place, then no doubt, as Schmidt suggested, it would have attracted hunter-gatherers from the whole of Africa and the Levant. And here's where the leading theory behind Gobekli Tepe gets astonishingly interesting. You see, so far there has been no evidence discovered that suggests people permanently resided and settled on the summit of Gobekli Tepe itself. And what could that possibly allude to? Why would these ancient people assemble this staggering, towering site amidst this awe-inspiring landscape? Well, to build a temple of course, a cathedral on a hill, a place of worship to the natural world, albeit one that would take the coordination of an entire society of hunter-gatherers to complete, demonstrating a method of human ingenuity and feats of engineering that have never been attributed to ancient human civilization. Now, that would take some pretty insane coordination, regardless, highlighting the clear need for communication between a society of humans that existed over 12,000 years ago. And even more staggering, Gobekli Tepe was constructed 6,000 years before the invention of writing, allegedly, anyway. And if you're not impressed by now by the many mysteries of Gobekli Tepe, they consider the implications of what we still don't know. Sadly for us, Klaus Schmidt passed away in 2014 at the age of 60, and although sadly gone, his legacy remains as the centre point behind unearthing the mysteries of Gobekli Tepe. In the words of Klaus Schmidt, you could have 50 archaeologists working on this site every single day, and you still wouldn't scratch the surface. His best guess, though, was that the answers may lie beneath that very surface where Schmidt strongly suggested that although no evidence of complete human remains have yet been found around this incredibly important site, beneath these massive stone pillars, human burials may have occurred. If that was the case, then clear compelling evidence of these remarkable and mysterious people, our ancient ancestors, would finally be unearthed. Perhaps then, the evidence needed for us to change our understanding of the ancient world will be far too compelling to ignore. It may beg the question, what other mysteries are long buried beneath this earth? Well, there we have it, our long and short answer to the question, what we find at Gobekli Tepe. After all, it changes pretty much everything. Well, what do you guys think? Do you have any compelling insights into what answers lie at the heart of Gobekli Tepe? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any other intriguing insights that you may have on the matter. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Fred Bear says, nice. Just nice. Thanks, Fred Bear. Nice one. You know what? That's a good note to end it on, actually. And unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. So cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just like the biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied flight voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions. And until next time, you take it easy.